Readings, rackings, and barlings, oh my! How wild is our wild ferment pomegranate meat? So it's been about eight weeks since we last looked at this. The last time we checked the gravity, it was at 1.088 which it started at 1.110, so that's not a whole lot of movement. So let's see what's doing. Notice there was neutral pressure in that airlock, which doesn't necessarily mean it's done. It just might have mean it stopped. Hmm. Okay. So it dropped down to 1.050. That tells me there's been some movement, but 30 points over eight weeks is not a lot of movement. What I'd like to do is actually give this a taste and see if it's done because sometimes you know the numbers will fool you they just just because it got 50 points of sugars in it doesn't necessarily mean it's overly sweet or not good so we're going to give this a little taste because if this doesn't work the next step is i gotta add yeast to it i hate to do that to a wild ferment unless i have to All those flavors really mixed together in the smell. It's very interesting. That's not bad. It's... That's not bad. It's potent, but it's like berry... You know the tartness you get from berries? That. That's the total That's sensation that I'm getting right now. Now, I also want to say something. We added the kefir lime leaves to this. And in the past, those have been like the bane of my existence, okay? In this particular brew, though, I think we might have either, either gotten them out soon enough or they just added a little bit to that tartness because it's not objectionable at all. I can taste them. Our, our logic for adding them to the pomegranate was to give the pomegranate that little bit of punch, and it's definitely got punch now. Oh, yeah, so this is actually quite nice. I think we accidentally succeeded. <laughs> this, is, this is really cool. I, I like this. I'm going to drink this. Well, he did. Yeah, but I mean, like, <laughs> what we're going to do now is we're going to rack this. And being that this is already pretty low in the shoulders here, we're going to put this into a three liter bottle because this is a gallon, which means it's really not a gallon. It's a little smaller. So I'm going to put this into a three liter bottle and hopefully we don't get too much headspace. Okay, so we're going to rack this. But for those of you keeping score at home, this came out to 8.1% alcohol by volume, which is actually pretty reasonable for a wild ferment. That's kind of cool. It tastes really interesting. I'm curious what this is going to taste like with some age. But we're going to rack this. And since it's very, very dark, but I do see some lease in the bottom, yeah. I don't want to go all the way to the bottom. I'm just going to go about here. And as we progress, we'll figure it out. It's incredibly aromatic coming through. Mm -hmm. Just... And it's the pomegranate that I'm smelling. Yep. I think this is like the first time that the lime leaves actually enhanced it rather than taken away. See, it's good to experiment. All right, so this has been racked. We put an airlock back on it because, you know, if there's going to be some degassing. It might still have a bit of fermentation to go. We don't know. So that's why we do these things to be safe, right? So what's going to happen? It's going to go sit for a few more weeks. And we're going, to, we're going to see if it'll clear out a little bit more, see how much more sediment will drop out. I did get a little bit sloppy at the end, but I want to mention one thing. When we were tasting it, I was like, okay, I taste what I'm guessing is pomegranate. It's kind of got that tart, tangy thing. And then as I was racking it, I was reading the ingredients again. We put in a significant amount of raisins in this, and that really came through here. It's almost like a pomegranate raisin at this point. And as soon as I read that, I went, that makes sense. But anyway. Um, this is just about ready to go. We're just going to sit it for a couple weeks, like I said, and we'll see you there. Yes, we're a little punch happy because we are doing so many filmings, but we're doing this for good reason. We don't want to bore you because right. a racking is a racking is a racking is a bottling is a reading is a... So we want to put them all together, mash it all in. That way you get the full feel of what that brew really is, rather than having to find 27 different pieces of this brew. So, observation go. number one, this stuff is dark. I put a flashlight to it, I couldn't see it. It's like the black void. However, this was good when we tasted it. It's been sitting for about two weeks now. I wanna get another reading just to verify that it is actually finished, and then we'll get to bottling and racking. Racking and bottling. That, nice color, good clarity. 
This was surprising last time we tasted it a couple weeks ago. I remember that. My weird lean forward there is because I'm getting some of the aroma and it's quite nice. 1.050. Totally stable. Bing, bing, bing. Good to go. So what we want to do is rack this to a pitcher first because these bottles are hard to bottle from and then we'll uh, get the bottling process going. Okay, so what I did is I poured that sample right back into this pitcher since everything's been sanitized in. The red bucket of sanitization! I had to do the jazz hands! Minor delay there. <laughs> All right, and we are just going to rack this. Now, if you're wondering why we're not bottling straight in, it's because these three liter Carlo Rossi bottles are not the easiest to bottle from. There'll be a lot of waste at the bottom, and I don't really know what we have for lease yet because it's so dark, I can't see it. So instead, I want to rack this off and see what we get, and then we'll go from there. So as I got to the bottom, I started seeing some lease in there, and I really didn't want to get that into here because we are going to bottle this today. So we have a little bit of wastage at the bottom. It's a little bit of a disappointment. I was hoping to not throw away that much, but that's part of these bottles too. They don't let me get it right into the corner, so there's always going to be a little bit more waste with these. Sometimes that's just the name of the game. But now we're going to bottle. So we just... Put that right back up there. <laughs> Get the bottles ready. And as always, we're going to use our bottling wand on the end of our siphon tube today. Because when you push down on the spring tip, it lets the liquid flow. When you lift up, it stops so you can go from bottle to bottle without making a mess. Because I know there's no sediment in the bottom here. I don't have to be quite as careful. <laughs> However, if you notice, we're at about this level here. That's probably about 3 liters, which means roughly 4 750 ml bottles. I'll just talk right through this little hole here <laughs> and uh i'm okay with that this was a wild ferment which means we didn't use any yeast it started out with a fairly high gravity 1.110 and it ended at 1.050 which is 8.1 percent alcohol not the highest we've ever had but certainly respectable for a wild ferment we've had people ask in the past about wild ferments and what alcohol tolerance they have well Yes, they have one. They have one. And they know it. <laughs> we don't. And they don't want to tell us. And there's, there's no consistency. Each strand is going to have its own unique traits. So there was no clear answer to give to that particular question. Another question that we're starting to see a lot is, how many days did you let this ferment? As long as it needed. I had somebody get a little bit upset with me at that answer, but it's the truth. There is no set time. I can't say this will be done in seven days. That's not fair. It doesn't work like that. And I can appreciate that in a world where everything you, is set. There's that way. parameters for everything. Brewing, particularly home brewing, is more of a series of if-then clauses. Yeah. So there is no one specific number. There is right. no golden answer that's going to tell you definitively. And even if I go with, I've made this in my house. 50 times, and I know it's within this day and this day, you make it in your house using slightly different ingredients with a slightly different situation, it's going to be different. There's no way. I can say it'll be done somewhere between two and 30 days. That's probably the most accurate answer I can give to almost all those questions. And so our definitive answer for when a brew is done isn't a time frame. It's when it's done. But it's a parameter. So when you think it's done, do a gravity reading. And then wait a week and do another gravity reading. If your gravity reading numbers don't change, then it's done. If they do change, it's not. By the way, if you're curious why I just made that face, there's a microphone one inch from the tip of my finger. <laughs> it was half an inch from being hit with the tube. So he, he may or may not have hit it a couple of times already today. But you don't know about that because <laughs> I edited that out. <laughs> I'm going to need a third hand. One thing I'd like to say about this one, it has an amazing color. I love this color, and we haven't had a red mead in a while. Even though some people like to pick on me for making all red meads, we've had quite a few that were golden or amber-hued lately. All right, I've reached the end, which means I need Derek to hold that bottle. However, there is some in the bottom of this, and still in the tubing, that's about to hit the microphone again. We'll just remove this guy. See, 
just a little bit on the end here. See this half bottle? I don't want to waste any of that. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pour this into here and put it in the fridge. I'm okay with that. Why am I yelling? <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> Not a finger. You got some of it in the bottle. <laughs> oh, I did spill it. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so... No, go. It's okay. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to put our very fancy patented scotch tape. Masking tape. Masking tape labels on these. And what are we going to write on them? Well, we're going to write what it is, when it was bottled. That'd be today. And what the ABV is. Yep. And what's going to happen with these? Well, this one, we're going to drink pretty soon. I'm going to put it in the fridge. Probably do a tasting on that in just a couple of weeks. This one, or one of these three, I'm not sure which one yet, it's going to go away for a whole year and we'll do a tasting at that point. The other two, we're going to get drunk, drank, drinked. We're going to drink them. If you like this video, we have about 300 videos on how to make wine, cider, beer, and mead on our channel. Thank you for liking and subscribing. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.